Over the past 50 years, the average American has become increasingly isolated from the military. And my project seeks to address how this distance affects the institution, the country, and our veterans. I would argue the results of this segregation are the veteran mental health crisis, involvement in military quagmires, and out of control spending. For many of us, there are three certainties of life as Americans, death, taxes, and supporting the troops. In fact, according to Gallup, the military is the only major public institution that's seen an increase in trustworthiness in the last 50 years. This positive reputation doesn't reflect military success. In fact, it reflects a growing public ignorance of what the military really is. According to statistics provided by the Department of Veterans Affairs, during World War II, roughly 12% of the population served in the military. So far in Iraq and Afghanistan, less than 1% of the population has served. This is a result of the post-Vietnam abolishment of the draft and has resulted in the construction of the all-volunteer army of today. According to the Center for a New American Security, of those soldiers who have served in our modern Middle East conflicts, half have done multiple tours and roughly 10% have gone at least four times. We now have an army of professional soldiers, not citizen soldiers. The first major effect of citizen disengagement from the military involves the severe mental health crisis facing our veterans. According to data from an Australian and New Zealand psychiatric journal, American veterans experience PTSD at a higher rate than at any time in the American military's history and at a higher rate than their peer forces throughout the world today. Additionally, American service members have experienced an epidemic of suicide. However, a study in the Annals of Epidemiology found that certain soldiers are predisposed to suicide before they enter the military. Thus, we shouldn't trace veterans and veteran suicide to the lie that war has gotten more brutal. The truth is, the soldiers fighting it simply shouldn't be there in the first place. This belief is based on the fact that enlisted ranks of the American military are mostly made up of poor citizens. According to data from the Pentagon, roughly half of new recruits come from zip codes permeated by lower middle class to poor households. The men and women entering our military simply come from situations that don't prepare them to handle the tremors of war. The mental health crisis among our veterans stems from a society that loves its military but doesn't want to serve in it. A society that loves to fight wars but forces the poor and desperate to fight them. The civilian and the soldier are no longer intertwined and we can blame the mental health crisis on that fact. The negative effects of our country's cognitive dissonance regarding the military don't stop at mental health. For someone my age, the U.S. has been at war almost all our lives. The longest war in our nation's history has come after the post-Vietnam banning of the draft. This is not coincidence. According to the Pew Research Center, since the end of the forced conscription of the Vietnam era, the percentage of veterans in Congress has dropped from 75% in both houses to 20%. Furthermore, without forced conscription, the children of representatives are less likely to serve. This has allowed for hawkish representatives to go to war without any real consequence. In 2003, the U.S. unilaterally invaded Iraq. The measure to allow the use of military force was overwhelmingly approved by both houses of Congress. Would we have spent eight years and over a trillion dollars had a draft been in place? The one way in which our disengagement from the military affects all civilians is through the continued expansion of the military-industrial complex. According to the CBO, roughly 57% of discretionary spending goes to the military. But what has all that money gotten us? Based on how much we spend on the military, you would imagine our veterans have the best healthcare in the world. And while it is true that we are spending more and more money on our veterans' health, the data I found regarding PTSD and recent scandals involving the VA would suggest this additional spending hasn't helped vets at all. Furthermore, the U.S. military's hardware projects have become more and more bloated since Vietnam. For example, during the Vietnam War, the military developed the A-10 Warthog, a plane that is still in service today and it only costs about $19 million a unit, according to the DOD. Its modern replacement, the F-35, costs roughly $101 million per unit and has been plagued by issues and cost overruns. As Americans slowly became more separated from the military that serves them, our country became more susceptible to the clutches of the military-industrial complex. According to John Bellamy Foster's work, as defense industry titans were formed, the public, 
convinced by politicians like Ronald Reagan, came to believe that the military-industrial complex was an invaluable pillar of the economy. Bloated and ineffective military projects are a result of this mindset. I grew up in a military town, surrounded by veterans, and to me there was nothing cooler than crossing the Coronado Bridge and seeing the massive Nimitz-class aircraft carriers in San Diego Bay. However, I had no idea what it meant to be in the military, and it wasn't until recently that I discovered what citizen disengagement was doing to the institution, and more importantly, our veterans. Our military is in the midst of an endless global war on terror, an immense mental health crisis, and the worst spending spree of all time. But nobody seems to care. If I could show this piece to anybody, I'd love to show it to every citizen in America. It's time that we reconnect with our service members because we have turned our backs on them and saying thank you for your service simply doesn't solve the tragedy that is our military. As a people, we no longer understand an institution that has been key to the formation of our national identity. And the danger of that misunderstanding cannot be underestimated. I would argue that to solve these problems, we must reinstitute the draft during wartime. It's time to put an end to forcing the poor and uneducated to fight our wars. It's time we normalize the veteran experience by enlightening society through service.